Welcome back, everyone, to Nail is a Don. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are going to have another match. A 1v1 on Banana Republic. I don't think I've seen this map before. It's got lava and jungles. Or lava and grass. I mean, I know this is kind of unrealistic, but any old hat Akron players know that I made a map with a very similar theming, so I'm cool with this. This, this works for me. I didn't make this particular map, mind you, but I like the theming. Anyway. Rudriff or Rudriffy, Rudriffy, Rudriff? I got Rudriff. Too many consonants. Rudriff is Rudriff, Rudriff, Rudriff. And yeah, whatever. Rudriff is playing rovers. On the other hand, Tanista going very, very far forward. Also playing rovers, but at the very edge of the starting location. Sheesh. Rudriff is completely in the back, very far behind. So. Yeah, that's that's a thing. Though at the same time, that does mean they do have a bit of a stronger wind production, while you know Tostic going for slightly more expensive, slightly less valuable solo collectors, but hey, Tostic is also farther forward. I mean they can take basically everything they want for themselves. They don't have to worry about anything else. On the other hand, Rudriff is gonna have a bit of a tricky time expanding forward. I mean, they do have a couple of these fencers going in, essentially being their mobile pen mobile pickets. But it may not be enough. I mean, they're kind of lucky that Atostic is not going for an aggressive strategy. Quite the opposite. Atostic has not even built... Well, like, hey, they built one dart. That's it. They, they got this. They got this, this year dart. That, that's, that's the one... It's their one flashy dart. That's it. That's this. this. Atostic single point of aggression. This dart. So... Oh, never mind. There's also Scorcher. Now there's a Scorcher as well. Yeah, Tostic basically playing this kind of unsafe. But honestly, they don't really need to worry about it. They're they're figuring correctly that Rutrophy is going to be so timid. Push to the back. Hanging out here. Not really worrying about the stuff. So I'm not sure... Not sure exactly how Rudriff is planning on getting themselves back into this game. Or into this game in the first place. Because the Tostic, they're getting a pretty strong advantage in terms of economy. More importantly, a strong advantage in terms of position. I mean, right now it's even, yes. But a Tostic can basically, basically take the entire Northwest. Take this entire natural expansion over here. They have this Southwest side they haven't even started to take yet. Which they will very shortly. They have have a bit less of a claim on these metal extractors. But it won't be too difficult to hold on to them. So overall, a Tostic is going to be looking at something like 40 metal per second minimum by the time they actually get to the point of the mid game like five minutes in and already we're seeing i mean it's already three minutes in and we're seeing a squirt is coming in should be able to get rid of these fencers with no real issue the squirts get in get rid of the fencers get rid of this metal extractor get rid of the mason on top of that there's a ripper coming in back but it's not going to help out and wait okay is so rudolph actually throwing in the towel i picked this game because it was not a three minute game Well, at any rate, Atostic actually contesting a little bit, but this, this Mason's dead. This Mason's not going to survive at all. I mean, Atostic's commander's right there. Mason trying to build a Stardust, it's simply not going to happen in time. At the same time, Rudriff is finding the dart with her commander, but that's really just information for Atostic. So Atostic builds up a continuously stronger economy. Uh, they're not even worried about building up much in the way of anything else. I... I missed something when I checked this. Like, I, I thought... When I grab this fight, yeah, no, it's not... Okay, I don't know. It's like, it didn't look like it was a short game, but man, Atostic is really taking the early lead strong here. The one downside is Atostic doesn't have the energy. I think that might be... That would be kind of the failing point here. They don't have the energy. They're kind of accessing all this metal, so they do have a lot of metal going their way, but they're not actually using it, which is less than ideal. Yeah, I would agree with Fine Step and Chad that losing two constructors is a resignable thing, but at the same time, Atostic isn't actually ahead. Rudriff is ahead when it comes to production capacity. Despite the fact that Atostic has more of the map to their name, they don't have the energy or caretakers or workers or whatever. They don't have the build power or energy to actually make use of all that metal. Rudriff has been expanding a little bit more slowly, but they absolutely do. Now, that being said, we could see some wind generators be built here. I mean, again... That would totally work, but I 
I don't see that. A Tossic's not doing that at all. That would be the most efficient way of, of fixing this problem, by the way. Absolutely the most efficient way. Especially considering this kind of map. While at the same time, Rouge have taken advantage of the fact that Atostic has naked expanded across their entire side of the map that, or rather, across Atostic's entire side of the map, that there's not much to stop this. I mean, even up here. This expansion over here with the Mason, where the wind generators could be built, nothing is happening there. And I think Atostic is just getting lucky because Rudriff isn't going to call their bluff. Or no, they are! No, the river's going in right already! <laughs> they are absolutely calling Tostic's bluff. And that will put a Tostic out on the back foot, honestly. I mean, the Ripper should not be able to get in here too trivially. And the Scorch is coming inside. They'll be able to deal with this without too much issue. But it may not matter. Scorch is coming in here. No, the Scorch will be able to stop this. It does matter. It absolutely does matter. May not matter regardless, though, in terms of overall economy. Rudriff isn't too far behind, economically speaking. Now coming in, taking out the Commander. There's nothing really defending this. I mean, two Lotuses against three Ravagers and three Ravagers, Defensors, Rippers. Yeah, this entire base is gone. The commander forced completely out of the game. So not a whole lot is going to stop this. And at the same time, Ravagers coming along here should be able to just wipe out the rest of the economy. Atostic losing a great deal of what they gained early in the game because, like I said, it's kind of naked expansion. Didn't have enough energy. Didn't have the build power. While Rudriff absolutely had the build power. Definitely has the energy. Doesn't quite have the metal, but basically hasn't been accessing this entire game, where Satostic has been accessing since the beginning. So I'd say this game is a very strong demonstration of why it's very important to not excess metal. Because that is the only reason why Rudriff is in this game, is because Satostic accessed metal. And Rudriff did not. Rudriff played their economy very intelligently. Granted, they're running into some issues right now because the wind is slow, but it's not terrible. Like, they still have a reasonably strong energy economy. And they aren't running into excess problems. Not to mention, Rudif could actually build some up, oops, build some wind generators here with their ex, with their commander, and it would work fine. And also, a Tostic losing all the metal extra extractors over to the back. This mason should go down as well. And at this point, I'd say Rudif is completely even. Actually, Rudif's ahead of, in terms of basically every metric now. A Tostic has lost just about everything they built up. Rudriff is slowly but surely rebuilding. They got the reclaim on top of the, all of that, too. I mean, look, at how much reclaim do they have here? 600 metal reclaim. It's eight minutes into the game, and 1v1 is a strong amount of reclaim. That's you know, t plus 10 per second for about a minute. And they're already ahead. Now, I kind of wish Rudriff would set up some wind generators over on this hill as well, just so that they didn't have everything focused on this one base, because right now, Atostic, if they wanted to, they could set up an air factory get a couple of phoenixes, and wipe out that entire back line of wind generators. There's nothing stopping it. The tridents would... Okay, the tridents would get in the way a bit, but... I mean, when you consider how centralized Rudriff's economy is, they are relying pretty heavily on defending the main center of the map. If the, if the center of the map falls, Atostic will win. That being said, Atostic's commander is kind of stuck here. I mean... There's no way they can to build up some defenses, and this will be of some use. Like it, it'll, it'll help defend the metal extractors a little bit, but not much. Honestly, Atostic's really fallen behind. I think if they get, uh, if they can get a slow rebuild going over here then Atostic should be able to even this game out. But right now, it is not looking good. No, I mean, okay, to be fair, there is, there's not a witch of a current army value, but you can switch on the stat screen from the beginning. And yeah, army value right now. Rudriff has a 2,000 metal lead in terms of, or 2,500 metal lead in terms of army value, and has been, I mean, as you can see in the attrition value, very efficient throughout the entire game. So yeah, fine. So there is kind of a widget for army value, it's just, Unfortunately, always starts in the center of the screen, massive, so I don't bring it up unless it's a slow part of the game. Which I'll admit, this game, it's kind of, the players are kind of taking turns. There's, there are some bits of downtime. This being one of them, as a Tostic is now rebuilding what they can in terms of their economy, though Rudriff is securely ahead. They got a lot of static defenses. They have a Geo plant. Okay, well, that works. Who needs win when you have Geo? I mean, okay. You kind of need both, but in this case, doesn't really matter. And Rudriff is 
setting up to get rid of these fencers, unfortunately hitting them head on rather than flanking them. But it doesn't look like it's that relevant. The Locust coming in, providing a little bit of support. The Black Dawn should be able to, or rather, Revenant rather, should be able to wipe out a few of them. Takes to the top side of them. But there's that flank. Gets rid of that south side of the line. And now we're seeing the Rippers, or sorry, the Fencers being destroyed thanks to basically being in a line and being flanked, crossing the T's, what it's called. Coming along the side and hit the flank, or hit the line from its side. So the road drift, nice T-crossing there. That will open up the center quite heavily to them. Actually, they could open up this north side. This is a bit of a problem to start us here. Like, it could... Yeah, it could present some issues. It is raised. That, that range indicator is not entirely accurate because of the angle, because of the height. I believe the range is... Like, it says it's here. It says it's here. But I think the range... Oh, no. No, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. Just eyeballing it, it looks like that is actually accurate range indicator based on the height. So with that, there is, well, considerably more of an army value coming in here for Ridriff. I mean, 1,400 medal of rippers against basically a full army, a full highly varied army. You have the fencers and the ravagers to completely destroy the rippers. The Nimbus is providing a little bit of extra support on top of that. The Rippers are actually managing to do okay against the Ravagers, but honestly, the Fencers... The Fencers are doing the main damage. The Ravagers are more just there to distract the Rippers and be a tank. Which, I mean, they are. But th th to be, you know, tanking the damage. That's the main point of that. Attempted flank coming in... Or attempted raid coming in from Atostic, not managing to do all that much. More powerful raid coming in here. Getting rid of some of the reclaiming metal... Or reclaiming co constructors here. That is 10 metal per second down for Rudruff in an instant. Though, considering Rudruff is clearly brave enough to put put reclaiming forces in the middle of no man's land, I... Yeah, we're seeing another one coming in here. I don't see Rudruff losing that medal for a long time. And Atostic still does not have the energy to actually use this. Finally getting the solar collectors needed... No, not even quite. They're, they're still low. I honestly don't know why Atostic didn't build up metal... Or di didn't build up wind generators on this hill when they had the chance. Atostic would be in a much stronger position had they done so. But yeah, energy is one of those things that's always a tricky thing to bear in mind when you're playing this game. It's just something that if you don't do it, you kind of fall behind. If you do it, you, you know, everything just works normally. Although to be fair, there's also overdrive, which Rudriff is taking full advantage of getting these pylons going. That will boost their economy even further. At this point, they are doubling Atostic's economy. We're very nearly doubling it. Unfortunately, a little low on the production capacity, but that won't last long. Shield butt factory on top of that. What is this going to be used for? Oh, Thug Law. Just standard Thug Law on top of the Rippers. No gunships coming out. I kind of wish there were, because Rudruff has plenty of metal to work with. Honestly, at this point, I kind of wish they'd upgrade their commander, because, I mean, what else are you going to do with this metal this quickly? So yeah, Rudruff is starting to excess a little bit, but they're at 70 metal per second. They have 50 build power running. 60 is going to come online, or 60, 50 to 60 is going to come online right now. There's the 70 coming online afterwards, so there is enough build power coming online that Rudruff is not going to have to worry about their metal for very long. So overdrive is doing an amazing job. Right, plus 18. Most of the advantage, honestly, is the overdrive. Rudruff and Atostic are quite even when it comes to their territory at this point, but Atostic simply has not set up for overdrive. They don't have enough energy to begin with, but they just barely now have enough energy. They are getting the fusion reactor help, but they don't have it spread out the way that Rudruff does. And spreading out your overdrive is the most efficient way to use it. Oh, that's... Rays are finally finding... Because the radar dots. It's the radar dot is what it's shooting at. Hence the variation. Hence it shooting in the middle of the sky and missing everything. Find stuff funny in the chat that the mechs is... Presumably these ones are asking for lotus locusts. And I absolutely agree. There's That's the thing. Atostic, despite having been completely wiped out early game, is not investing a lot in defenses along their economy. Relying instead entirely on these frontline forces and actually relying on this Iris to essentially be pure offense. And there it is, Iris Ripper once again we're seeing go forward, and I... I don't know, Rudriff isn't really set up in a way that's super vulnerable to that. Like, where are you gonna hit that's gonna be hit hard? Not to mention, you know, a stray bullet coming off the Nimbuses 
that hits the ground, that reveals cloaked. Also, also, these forces are in front, basically scouting things out. The iris has been completely revealed. The fact that there's an iris here is not a mystery anymore, and very soon will be spotted itself. Still a strong showing coming in, but Felon... Felon is here. The shield pot switch actually paying off... Paying dividends, really. Quite amazingly. Unfortunately, one of the pylons does go down, but that's fine for Rudra. If they still have plenty of overdrive to work with, plenty of economy, did not lose anything. Actually managed to get rid of four of Atostic's masons on top of that, so the reclaim not going to go anywhere. Atostic forced to retreat, and Rudra is giving chase. And Atostic's force was completely routed, and with that... Rudra should have no problem taking on everything here. I mean, they're going to be able to take this metal extractor, going to be able to take... And that's a high-value metal extractor, too, on top of the overdrive they have. Going to be able to retake all the pylon sections. And the only thing really saving Atostic is that Rudra, if they attack right now, they're attacking the main base. Though, to be fair, Atostic has no static defense other than what's over to the north. That's it. This base is completely undefended. Rudra could have assaulted right then and there and, and closed out the game. I don't know why they don't know this. Oh, uh, they don't have enough radar coverage over that side. That is unfortunate, because if they knew that there was no static defense, that would be game. Oof. And there goes that tri Trinity into the lava. Well, that's kind of a cool effect. The reclaim just slowly sinks into the lava. Or wait, is that... Oh, that's not a cool effect. That's just... There's no effect there. It's just how it goes because it's just a liquid surface that's what happens with all liquids okay never mind that doesn't look cool it's just yeah oh atosta getting a fair bit of information about the southeast side of the map not sure they're going to take advantage of that or be able to they might try i mean they have the cloaked force they might just decide to sweep around but that would leave them open to a counterattack. at this point they're barely able to defend as is And if you're wondering how this game is even, especially if you came in late, Atostic got completely ruined. Their economy got ruined, and that gave Rujif the advantage from the beginning. They had a production advantage from the start. They were able to turn that into an energy advantage. They were able to maintain the army. And Atostic simply has not been able to make up for the fact that they had no energy. Like, they were e-stalling hard at the beginning of the game. Their naked expands were destroyed, and they weren't able to take advantage of the naked expands due to the e-stall. While, on the other hand, Rujif was never... Or almost never restalling, and always had the production needed. So, really, if you look at the main thing here, metal used, Rudriff is way ahead, despite the production being quite similar, because Atostic had you know, 4,000 metal, of, or yeah, about 4,000 metal excess early on, and Rudriff had basically none. That's what happened. That's why Rudriff is taking this game in large part, is because of that reclaim. Sorry, not because of the reclaim. Well, reclaim helped, but because of the fact that Rudriff was basically able to turn their sensible production instead of naked expansion like they were able to punish naked expansion while avoiding metal excess themselves while Atostic was e-stalling and metal accessing and Rudriff was turning their economic and territory advantage into much larger economic and territory advantages thanks to overdrive and thanks to taking the southeast side of the map and now Rudriff's just managed to hold a solid lead because of the fact that Atostic hasn't been able to counter raid Rudriff has simply maintained a relatively sensible set of defenses, and Atostic continuing to naked expand and rely entirely on their forces being able to get in position in time, or just not being attacked. I think they were expecting Rudriff to attack directly, and Rudriff didn't. And even now, Rudriff is being quite careful. They're waiting until they find an opportune moment to set up, and then working from there. same time there is an assault force coming in to try and get rid of the geo plant and it should be able to do so and that is advanced geo on top of that wipes that out gets rid of the ra ravens in the process but that is going to be quite the blow rudriff actually losing all of their overdrive economy in the process that is huge that could turn things around i mean Atostic, they have a lot of they have a lot of imps coming in here they are running into some trouble when it comes to getting rid of the shields, mind you, but the imps could still be an issue. I mean, the outlaws are here to defend against exactly that, which is kind of interesting, because, you know, they wouldn't have known. But yeah, those imps do not manage to do much thanks to the outlaws. I mean, basically, Rudriff has the exact counterforce necessary for what Atostic is up to. 
Like, really, very good planning here from Atos from Rudriff. They've seem to just know exactly what Atostic is going to be doing and counters that directly. So I'm actually quite impressed, honestly. It feels like Rudriff, they might not have as much in the way of mechanical skill, but honestly, I'm not sure about that. They seem to be fine for that. And their opening wasn't as strong. Like I said, they didn't have as much in the way of, oh, yeah, and all these imps just stunning each other, allowing the felons to wipe them out. So they might have had as, as strong an opening, but honestly, it just feels like Rudriff knows exactly where to what to do. They know what Atostic's going to be doing. They've been basically one step ahead of Atostic just about every single time. Like all this preparation coming in here for the last five minutes is paying off in spades. Just about every part of, of Rudriff's army is designed to counter what Atostic is doing, and that was with minimal scouting. Atostic, I guess, is just that predictable. I mean, granted, they don't really have... They haven't really built a lot. They have basically gone Mass Ripper, and Rudriff has switched over to... I mean, shield bots on top of some rippers of their own and dummies of their own, just and fencers, just to keep deal with the rippers. All that deals with the rippers. The outlaws help deal with the imps. The the fencers are on top of that as well, help, and felons also help deal with the imps. Like really, overall, Rudriff's going for a super safe spread of units that allows them to basically answer whatever Atostic throws at them, while Atostic has been hyper focused on winning with basically mass ripper and nothing else. And now with the geothermal plant gone, I mean, that threw things for a bit of a loop, but honestly not enough for Atosky to take this, because, like, again, 14k metal use advantage, 30k attrition advantage, and honestly, that was never not the case. Rudriff had even army for the first two minutes of the game, and then it went heavily in their favor. They consistently had the kill advantage, they consistently had the defense advantage, they consistently had the economy advantage. Except very near the beginning. Again, this is the Naked Expand, and this is when the Naked Expand was destroyed. Overall, Rudriff just played that very strategically. They knew exactly where to build up. I mean, I don't... I still think Atostic had a better starting location. I still think starting forward is a stronger choice on this map. What I think Atostic didn't do is build enough energy. Like, that was the main reason they lost. They accessed early on. That left them with really no room to counter all the expansion Rudriff was doing. Despite an early lead in terms of army and massive early lead in terms of economy. If Atostic had built up wind generators over here, I could have seen them getting enough energy to then turn that into production. Like, a bunch of wind generators, a bunch of caretakers. Really focus hard. Like, ramp hard. Build all the energy you can wherever you can. Wind generators wherever you can. Cheapest energy on the highest points. I could have seen Atostic turn that around because they had a very strong metal income in the first couple of minutes of the game. They had 40, 50 metal per second. And then it just dropped because they didn't use any of it and, Ato and Rudriff wiped it out. See, like this thing, Atostic goes up and down and then back up again. Rudriff just consistently goes up. They only lost, this is the Moho Geo going down, but everything else, they just consistently went up. It just trended up almost monotonically. So a bit of a slower start from Rudriff, but the fact that Atostic overextended and Rudriff punished that and Atostic didn't take advantage of the fact that they had all that economy. Yeah, that basically did the trick. So, with that, I am going to be going to one more match. We have one last match. It is going to be between Randy and Dregs on Hourglass. I haven't seen Randy in a while. It's kind of, kind of encouraging. There's a couple hundred people in chat today. Which is great. I'm glad to see it. There's a lot of people playing. A lot of people... Like, looking at the battle list, there's plenty of people playing. Small and big games. People in Matchmaker. I'm not sure what happened, but I'm glad to see that the game's getting more active. Despite the fact that I know I've been kind of not playing it as much recently. I'm actually kind of getting back into playing it recently. But I realize, yeah, I've been kind of busy on the weekends. I haven't been streaming as much. No promises, but I'll stream when I can. Anyway, we'll be back with the next match, which will be, like I said, Randy and Dregs on Hourglass. So stay tuned, because that will be interesting. I'm I'm really curious to see what Dregs does, because Randy Randy loves their, their glaive span. They've always, like, the micro has been amazing for them. So yeah, stay tuned for that. I'll be back in a second. Oh, wait, this is... Stay tuned for that. We'll be back in a second. As I said, again, 